Welcome to this video on how to draw and estimate from scratch with your trial version of BuildingWorks. With BuildingWorks you can get instant costs as you design your plans. In this tutorial we'll show you how. You design your plans in the drawing module of BuildingWorks. To do that you'll need a mouse with a scroll wheel. If you haven't got one you can pick one up from a PC shop or local supermarket for a few pounds. You'll also need the BuildingWorks estimate module activated as it's this part of the software which calculates the costs and quantities of resources involved. You'll find it helpful to have a copy of the BuildingWorks shortcut key guide next to you to help with drafting your plans. You can find a link to this guide underneath the How to Draw and Estimate from Scratch video on the BuildingWorks support site. Double click on the BuildingWorks icon on your desktop to launch the software. From the BuildingWorks home screen you can create new projects and open existing ones. There are also links to help topics which will enable you to get the most out of your software. To get started, create a project. A project encompasses all of the work you're undertaking for a client on a specific site. So a project may consist of just one job, for example a new build, extension or renovation, or multiple jobs, as in the case of a development with multiple houses. Click New on the left hand menu. Then tick the items you want to include in your project. To draw and estimate, you'll need both a drawing and estimate in your project. Click Drawing, and then consider which drawing template you want to use. I'm going to select the A1 1-50 plain page option. You can change the scale and page size later on from within the drawing module if you need to. The estimate has automatically been added to the project, so all you need to do is select a labour productivity profile. The Labour Productivity Profile sets the labour allowances for each of the tasks within your estimate. The Extension and Renovation Labour Productivity Profiles generally allow more time for each task to be completed. You can customise the labour allowance for each type of labour from within your estimate. I'm going to select the New Build Labour Productivity Profile. Once you've done that, click Create Project. After a moment, the project details screen will open up. From the project details screen you can enter the client and site address details. You can rename the job by right clicking on it. And you can also add extra jobs to your project if you need to. For example, you'd need one job for each house on a development. Take a few moments to familiarise yourself with the screen. Depending on the version of Building Works you're running, the project detail screen may appear slightly differently. From the main window, you can open the drawing and the estimate modules. At the top of the screen is the ribbon. The ribbon will change depending on what screen you're looking at. Each screen has different tabs with different buttons. The Project Explorer sits on the left hand side of the screen. Use the Project Explorer to navigate your way around building works. For now, click on the drawing on the Project Explorer. This is the drawing screen. The Project Explorer remains on the left hand side of the screen. On the ribbon at the top of the screen you'll notice a new set of tabs. On the Architectural tab you'll see all of the intelligent building design tools you'll need to create your plans, such as walls, windows, stairs and roofs. You'll find building works quicker to use than other CAD packages you may have seen as the tools are pre-configured specifically for construction. Let's start by drawing the external walls. On the Architectural tab, click on the External Walls drop-down menu. Building Works comes supplied with a range of external wall types, from traditional masonry walls, to timber frame, SIPs and ICF walls. Click on a wall type. For this example, I'm going to use the brick and block cavity walls for my ground floor walls. The Wall Component Builder pops up. 
From here you can choose the specification of your walls, foundations and footings and enter some key dimensions for these elements. Some of this information, such as the width of each leaf, is required to draw your wall. Some of the data captured here is used to build the estimate as you draft your plans. Start by selecting a wall specification which suits your job. A choice of specifications with different U values, structural thicknesses and rates are available out of the box. Each specification includes real materials and manufacturer product data. Click on the wall specification you want to use. If you need to, you can tailor a specification by clicking on the specification and then clicking the Review Specification button. You can swap or edit a rate within the specification or delete any resources or rates you don't need. You can also add an item to the specification using the Add Assembly button. Once you're happy with the wall specification, click Next to move on to the next page of the Wall Component Builder. Now select Configuration. If you select the upper floor option, no foundations and footings will be included. For this example, I'm going to draw a ground floor, which includes foundations and footings as you'd expect. Click Next. The next screen prompts you to select a specification for the foundations. You can review and edit a foundation specification by selecting the specification and clicking the Review Specification button. But if you're happy with the specification as it is, simply click Next. Now you can review the foundation dimensions. Of course, you can click into any of the boxes and change the dimensions as required. If the Next button changes to say scroll down at any point, it means there are input boxes you need to review further down the screen. Once you've scrolled down and reviewed all of the dimensions, the Next button will reappear. You can click back at any time to go back to the previous screen if, for example, you realise you need to make any changes. Or click Next to continue to the footing details. This next screen prompts you to select a specification for the footings. Select the footing specification you want to use. Review it if necessary using the Review Specification button. Or click Next to continue working your way through the Wall Component Builder. The next screen requires you to select a footing configuration. Of course, it's crucial that you ensure your selected foundation and footing are compatible in terms of construction and dimensions. Select shallow strip or trench fill as required, then click next. You can now review the footing dimensions. The dimensions are typical default figures, but of course you can change them to suit your job. Check out the handy tech tip at the top of the screen to see exactly what dimension is required for the selected input box. Once you've checked the DPC height is correct, click Next. Finally, you can tell BuildingWorks about the dimensions of the wall. Firstly, enter the height of unfinished wall. In other words, the height of wall which is taken up by the floor above and doesn't require plastering and decoration on the internal side. Now select the wall height from the drop-down box. Alternatively, you can type a wall height into the drop-down box. Then click Next. Depending on the specifications you've selected, you may then be prompted to add concrete pump higher to your estimate. Type the number of days higher required into the rate quantity box and then click Finish. You're now ready to begin drawing your walls. When drawing each of your building components, you'll want to refer to the instructions window. The instructions window explains how to draw or insert each part of your design. Its default position is below the drawing area, near the bottom of the screen. Right now, the instructions window is telling us to click to place the start point of our walls. You can click anywhere in the drawing area to place the first corner of the walls. Click and release the left mouse button to place the point. Don't hold down the left mouse button, just click and release. The red line on the wall highlights which side of the wall you're placing with your mouse clicks, while the arrow identifies the external side of the wall. You'll notice a set of wall tools appear on the ribbon towards the top of the screen when you're drawing the walls. From here you can change the external side of the wall by selecting either left or right from the external side drop-down box. 
The justification drop down box tells Building Works which side of the wall to place with your mouse clicks. In the justification drop down box, I'm going to select left. As I'm drawing my walls in a clockwise direction, this means I'll be placing the points on the outside of my walls. Now the instructions window is telling us to click to place the next point. To tell Building Works where to place the next point, you can simply press an arrow key on your keyboard to indicate the direction of the next point. I'm going to press the right arrow key as I want to place the next point to the right of the first one. The distance dialog box pops up, asking you to enter the distance to the next point. In this example, I'm going to enter 5850 into the distance dialog box to place the next point 5850mm or 5.85m to the right of the first point. Once you've entered the distance to the next point, click OK. The instructions now tell you to click to place the next point. I'm going to press the down arrow key on my keyboard and I'm going to enter 10,350mm into the distance dialog box. As you can see, Building Works is set up by default to work in millimetres for length. It uses square metres for area. You can, however, change these settings if you wish. Take a look at the video on changing the units for help on how to do this. Click OK to place the next point of the walls. You can continue to place your walls in this way, pressing the arrow keys to tell Building Works where you want the next point on your walls. Once you've placed the second to last point, as indicated by the on-screen instructions, you can click the C key on your keyboard to close the walls. The C key can be used to close any item. It will always close the item by the shortest possible route. So that's your external walls in place. As you can see from the figure at the bottom right hand corner of the screen, Building Works is building your estimate as you draw each element of your design. So here we can see the cost of the brick and block cavity walls. Of course, costs are dependent on the material, labour and plant rates in the software. As prices can vary, it's important to check the rates match what you pay. Also bear in mind that costs reflect the chosen specification and the quality of material selected, and also include a wastage allowance. You can also draw and estimate your internal walls in a very similar way. I'm going to add internal block walls to the ground floor. Now let's add some windows to the design. On the Architectural tab, click on the Windows drop-down menu. Select a type of window. I'm going to use Softwood Windows for this job. The Windows Component Builder pops up. The first screen prompts you to select a window from the onboard library. You can sort the windows using a variety of filters on the left-hand side of the screen. You can filter the windows by manufacturer, size, U-value and so on. I'm going to filter the windows by height and select a window with a 1,195mm height. If you know the range of windows you want to use, you can type a keyword into the Find box at the top of the screen. And click Find. Once you've located the window you want, click on the window to select it. Then click Next. You may then get an option to select the window colour. If so, click on a colour to select it and then click Next. The next screen asks you to enter a couple of dimensions for the window. Check the height from the floor to the top of window input box. This dimension will place the windows at the correct height in any elevations you draw. Press the tab key on your keyboard to move to the next dimension input box and check the external reveal depth. Once you're happy with the dimensions, click Finish. Now you're ready to place some windows on your drawing. The instructions ask you to select an insertion point on the wall. I'm going to zoom in on the front wall of the house by placing my cursor over the front wall and scrolling the mouse wheel towards the screen. If snap points such as midpoints and nearest points appear when you're hovering your cursor over the wall, you're in snap mode. 
Sometimes you might want to insert a window into the middle of the wall. I can do so by finding the appropriate snap point. Press the F8 key on your keyboard. A set of dimensions will then appear on screen. Once in dimension mode, you'll see that Building Works is by default set up to measure to the centre of the window. To measure to one side of the window, you need to change the justification. I want to place the left side of this window 900mm from the left corner of the wall. The justification of the measurement is dependent on the way the wall is facing, so it may at first be a bit confusing. Imagine you're standing inside the house, facing towards the wall you're working on. This will give your left and right justification. So, in this case, I need to set the justification to right. Change the justification by selecting an option from the justification drop-down box. If I hold my cursor over the external leaf, building work shows the dimensions from the ends of the external leaf to the left side of the window. If I hold my cursor over the internal leaf of the wall, building works measures from the end of the internal leaf to the left side of the window. Press the tab key on your keyboard to change whether you're measuring from the left or right end of the wall. You can place the window using the on-screen dimensions to guide you. Or alternatively, you can enter a dimension. To position the window by typing in a dimension, click on the distance input box at the bottom right of the screen. Highlight the figure in there, then type the distance from the end of the wall into the input box. Then press the left mouse button to confirm the dimension and place the window. After you've placed the window, the window component builder pops up again, this time asking you to select a lintel. Building Works automatically locates a range of lintels suitable for your wall type, thickness and opening width. This information, of course, is essential if you're estimating as you design. Building Works captures the data to cost the job. Click on the lintel you want to use and then click Next. Finally, the Window Component Builder prompts you to select a specification. You can check the specifications by clicking on them and clicking the Review Specification button. Once you've selected a specification, click Finish. BuildingWorks now invites you to place another window with the same specification. If you've finished placing windows of this specification, press the Escape key on your keyboard to drop the Window Insertion tool. Otherwise, continue placing your windows. BuildingWorks remembers the window insertion settings from the windows you've just placed. Use the Justification drop-down box to change the justification and the Tab key to change the active dimension. Also, make sure your cursor is hovering over the external leaf of the wall if you're measuring from an external corner. Once the windows are in place, you can see the cost of the job, including windows. The process is exactly the same for placing doors, only you may need to select the hinge side and direction of opening of the door. Placing other symbols onto your drawing takes no time at all. Choose from an extensive library of staircases, plumbing and heating, electrical, kitchen and bathroom symbols. Once you're happy with the ground floor, you can start on the upper floor. For this house, the specification and layout of the upstairs walls are different from the downstairs walls, so I'll have to draw them from scratch. However, if your upper floor walls have the same specification as your ground floor walls, you can take a shortcut and copy your ground floor plan to create the first floor plan. Take a look at the video on copying your ground floor plan for help on how to do this. Once your upper floor is drawn, you can add the roof. I'm going to start by adding a straightforward apex roof to my design. Go to the Architectural tab and find the Roofs drop down menu. Select the roof type you want from those available, including cut, truss, sips and flat roofs. I'm going to use the cold truss roofs. The Roof Component Builder pops up. From here you can choose the specification and type or shape of roof. 
and enter its dimensions. Start by choosing a specification which suits your job. I'm going to select the tiled trust cold roof with timbers at 400mm centres, high thermal performance specification. As with the walls, you can tailor a roof specification by clicking on the specification and then clicking the review specification button. If you're happy with the specification defaults, click next. The next screen prompts you to select the type of tiles you want to use from a range of plain tiles, pan tiles, natural slates, interlocking tiles and fibre cement slates. In the filter drop down box, select the type of tiles you want to use. Then click on the specification you want to use on the left hand window. You can click anywhere on the picture or the description to select the specification. On the right hand side of the window, you'll see the main tile, eaves tile, hip bridge tile and so on, as appropriate for the tile system you've selected. I'm going to select fibre cement slates for this design. And I'm going to use the 500 by 250 mm specification. Once you're happy with the specified tiles, click next. If there are multiple tile assembly options for your selected tile, you'll then be prompted to select the tile assembly you want to use. Read through the descriptions and decide whether you want to use a dry fix system or a mortar bedded system. Click on the assembly you want to use and then click next. The next screen prompts you to select a type of roof. Click on a roof image or the adjacent button to select a roof type. Apex roof is already selected so I can just click next. The next screen prompts you to enter some dimensions for the roof. I'm going to change the pitch of the roof to 35 degrees. If you change the pitch on one side, Building Works will automatically change the other side too. Review the other details. You can ignore the valley options as they're not relevant in this case. Click Next. Now depending on the type of roof and the specified materials, you may see one more screen which allows you to check resource allowances. In this case, I can check and edit the allowance for the tiles and also the roof truss allowance. Scroll down the window and check the figures, changing them as necessary. Note that you can later review these costs from the resource price allowances tab on the estimate dashboard. Once you're happy with the resource allowances for now, click Finish. Building Works is now ready to draw the roof. There are four simple steps to drawing an apex roof. Don't forget to follow the on-screen instructions to guide you through the process. The first instruction tells you to click on any wall that the roof is on. Building Works will take the wall plate height from this wall, so it doesn't really matter which wall you click on, as long as the roof sits on it. I'm going to click on the front wall of the house. The next instruction tells you to click on the first corner to indicate the width of the building. In the case of an apex roof, the width of the building means the gable end of the roof. When drawing a hipped or barn hipped roof, the width is the hip end of the roof. I'm going to click on the front left corner of the house. The next instruction tells you to click on the second corner to indicate the width of the building. I'm now going to click on the back left corner of the house. The final instruction tells you to click on the opposite corner to indicate the length of the building, or press T to join an existing wall or roof. We're not joining wall or roof on this occasion, so you simply need to click on the opposite end of the building. It doesn't matter which corner you click on. I'm going to click on the back right corner of the house. Once you've drawn your roof, the extra items window will appear, showing you all the extra items you can add to the roof. You can quickly draw your ceiling. You can also add rainwater goods, a loft hatch, purlins, binders and so on. For help on adding extra items to your roof, take a look at the videos on drawing roofs. So that's the materials, labour and plant required for the apex roof, all accounted for in your estimate. It's as simple as that. For more complex roofs, 
you can piece together different roof configurations to create an endless number of roof shapes. I'm going to add a lean-to roof for the front porch now. Don't forget, in just a few clicks you can create automatic elevations straight from your plans. Take a look at the video on creating elevations to learn how to do this. Now let's take a look at the impressive 3D model BuildingWorks has created directly from your plans. If the 3D model window is already available on screen, click on the tab to view it. If it's not currently on screen, launch the 3D model window by going to the Views and 3D tab and clicking the 3D model button. You can rotate the model to view it from a different perspective by placing your cursor over the model, holding down the left mouse button and moving the mouse around. You can scroll the mouse wheel towards and away from the screen to zoom in and out of the model. Hold down the scroll wheel to drag the 3D model around. Click the Home button to reset the 3D model to its original view at any time. You can view the 3D visualisation in Solid, Textured, Wireframe or Transparent mode. You can use the Visibility drop-down menu to show and hide different aspects of your design. For example, you can hide the roof and hide the ceiling to better explore the layout of your design. Now let's move to the estimate module and take a look at the estimate in more detail. As you drafted your plans, BuildingWorks used the specifications you selected combined with the dimensions of the design to estimate each element of the job. Click Estimate on the Project Explorer. You'll find yourself looking at the estimate dashboard here you can see the cost of each component and if you scroll down to the bottom you'll see the total cost of the job. From the estimate dashboard you can set your profit markup and adjustments, you can change your labour productivity profile, you can check the price allowances for your trusses and so on, you can round up plant allowances to whole days or weeks and set your VAT rate. From the estimating tab you can add to the estimate without adding to the drawing. You'll probably want to add site preliminaries and subcontract quotes here. From the Estimating Calculators tab, you can open each estimating calculator and check the specification of each element of the job, swapping resources and updating prices as required. You'll see there's an estimating calculator for the brick and block cavity walls and one for the rendered block walls. Click the Open button on the brick and block cavity wall estimating calculator. BuildingWorks now opens the brick and block cavity wall. You'll find yourself looking at the dimension linked specified items of the brick and block cavity wall estimating calculator. Here at the top of the screen you can see the total cost of all the walls of this specification. As you look down the screen you'll see a detailed breakdown of all the specified assemblies which are linked to the dimensions you've entered for the brick and block cavity walls. The brick and block partial fill cavity wall assembly includes brickwork, blockwork, insulation, cavity tyres, plastering and decoration. All of these items are linked to the wall area dimension. BuildingWorks gives you a rate per square metre for this assembly, alongside the total cost of this assembly. Click on the arrow to expand an assembly and see all of the items which have been estimated. Now you can see each of the rates which makes up this assembly. There's a rate, or in other words, a cost per square metre for each complete distinct task such as laying the brickwork or fixing the insulation. Each rate includes the cost of labour, plant and materials. From here you can see the rate quantity and also the cost per unit for each rate. Clicking on any of the plus buttons you can look at each rate in more detail. For example, the brickwork rate comprises bricks, mortar and labour to lay the bricks. With software as intelligent as this Missing things off your estimate will be a thing of the past. To view the cost and dimensions of each individual brick and block cavity wall, click on the arrow next to the brick and block partial fill cavity wall estimating calculator on the Project Explorer. This will show you all of the individual wall components. Click on one of the wall components. 
you can see any sundry items associated with this particular wall. If you click on the Dimension Link Specified Items tab, you can see the cost of this individual wall. Click on the Dimensions and Linked Components tab. Here you can see the dimensions of the wall. Towards the bottom of the screen, you'll find the building components linked to this wall, namely the foundations, footings, windows and doors. Now, if you want, you can swap the resources being used to see how it impacts on your budget. Let's have a go at swapping the brick type. Note that when you change the brick type in one wall, the brick type will be changed in every other wall within the estimating calculator. Click on the Dimension Linked Specified Items tab of the wall and open up the Brick and Block Partial Fill assembly. If you wanted to change the brick for a different size of brick, for example to use Imperial rather than metric bricks, you would need to change the brickwork rate. That's because the labour calculations and mortar quantities associated with the bricks would also need to change. However, if you only want to change the brick finish, you can simply swap the brick resource. Click on the plus button next to the brickwork rate to find the brick resource. Click on the swap button adjacent to the brick. Once you click the swap resource button, a dialog box pops up explaining that changing a resource within the specification will change it across the entire estimating calculator. What this means is that if you change the brick type in wall 2, the brick type will also change in walls 3, 4, 5 and so on. The brick you select will also be used in any walls you estimate in the future using this estimating calculator. Click OK. The swap resource window pops up. Scroll down the window and find the resource you want to use in your specification. In this case I'm going to use the Hansen Clumber Buff Brick. Click on the resource you want to use to select it. It will appear highlighted in blue. Click OK to select the resource. The new resource will now appear in place of the old one and the estimate cost has been updated to reflect the change. Remember, this change will have occurred everywhere throughout the estimating calculator where the old brick was specified. Now let's add some preliminary cost to the estimate. On the Estimating tab, click the Preliminaries button and select Site Establishment from the drop-down menu. Select the Site Establishment specification and then click Finish. The Site Establishment Estimating Calculator is a list of sundry costs. Simply type in the rate quantity of each item you require. Let's say I need the site cabin for 26 weeks, that's 6 months, and the same for the site toilet. Type in the area of the site compound here if you need one. If we click on the plus button to expand the rate, you'll see that it includes subbase, plant to prepare and remove the subbase, and also the labourer's time to place and compact the subbase. You can add extra hours of general labourer's time to set up the compound here if needed. Here you can add security fencing. If this isn't the appropriate length of security fencing, you can swap the rate. Click the swap rate button, click OK, and the swap rate window pops up. Find the rate you want to use in your specification in this case the appropriate length of security fencing. Click on it to select it and then click select. The new rate will now appear in place of the old one and you can enter the number of weeks higher you need into the rate quantity box. Returning to the estimating tab you can use the preliminaries drop down menu to add design costs, travel costs, preliminary costs and so on to your estimate. You may want to add some subcontract quotations to your estimate for fixed price quotes. Let's say you want to add a plumbing subcontract quotation to the estimate. On the Estimating tab, click on the Subcontract Quotes button and select Subcontract Quotations from the drop down menu. Select the Subcontract Quotation specification and click Finish. Like the Site Establishment Estimating Calculator, the Subcontract Quotations Estimating Calculator is a list of sundry costs. Start by locating the appropriate quote type. In this case I'm going to use the plumbing first fix quotation. Type the number of items 
into the rate quantity box. Usually this will be 1. You can enter 2 if you want to duplicate the quote for any reason. Then enter the subcontract quotation into the item cost box. You must put a figure into both of these boxes for the cost to be added to the estimate. When you click out of the box, the cost will appear at the top of the screen. I'm also going to add a plumbing second fix quote. So I'll type in a rate quantity of 1 and then enter the item cost of £1200 into the item cost box. You can add as many subcontract quotations as you need in this way. Now let's take a look at the Gantt chart or build program as it's called in building works. What's really clever about the build program is that although you can use it standalone to manage the job, the chart is actually linked to all the materials and labours specified in building works. So building works can produce time-based reports such as cash flow or profit forecasts or just-in-time material and labour schedules. Click on the build program on the Project Explorer. The first time you navigate to the build program, you'll need to build or create the build program by entering a few details. A dialog box pops up prompting you to enter some key information. Select a start date by clicking on the drop down box. Then select a build program template from the drop down box. The template you select controls the order of the build phases in the Gantt chart and their dependencies. For example, our typical build program assumes that the masonry shell and roof need to be completed before windows and doors are installed. However, if you are building a masonry skinned timber frame building, you might want to make the building weather tight and begin the internal works before starting on the masonry skin. You could set up a new build program in your library to reflect this. Click Next. The next dialog box asks you to enter the number of labourers who will be working on site. Click into the quantity column adjacent to the labourer type and use the arrows to increase or decrease the number to match the gang sizes you will be using. These gang sizes are used to calculate the length of each build phase bar in the bar chart based on the information contained in the estimate. Once you've updated your gang sizes, click finish. After a few moments, the build program will appear on screen. On the left hand side of the screen, you'll see the task list. And on the right hand side of the screen, you'll see the Gantt chart. You can scroll across the task list and Gantt chart using the scroll bars at the bottom of the window. You can easily change the start or end date of tasks or move tasks on the chart. Note that altering the task lengths does not change the labour calculations in the estimate. However, changes made in the build program will appear in your just in time schedules, cash flow, and profit forecasts. When changing the start date or duration of tasks, it helps to set the time scale to week stroke day. Also check that you're zoomed in to 100%. That way you can clearly see the days and weeks on the chart. If you hover your mouse over a task, you'll see the task name and the labourers assigned to the task, if applicable. To increase the length of a task, hover your mouse over the end of the bar until a double headed arrow appears. Then hold down the left mouse button and stretch the task until it reaches the desired date. To move a whole task forwards or backwards, hold down the left mouse button in the middle of the bar and drag it into its new position. Any changes will automatically cascade through the later tasks. Take a look at the video on setting up the build program for advice on how to get the most out of your build program. Why not spend a few moments looking at the reports produced by Building Works? Note that to ensure the dates display correctly on your reports, you first need to set up the build program. Click Reporting on the Project Explorer. The Estimate Completion Checker dialog box pops up, prompting you to check your estimate. The Estimate Completion Checker helps ensure that you haven't missed anything from your estimate or made any errors. The traffic lights on the left hand side Highlight any potential issues with the estimate. Take a look at the video on reports for more information on how to use the estimate completion checker. Click close for now. In the reporting screen you'll find an extensive list of reports which Building Works has created. No extra effort required. The descriptions give you an idea of what's included in each report. Double click on a report in the main window to open it. Let's take a look at the profit forecast report. 
Note that the profit forecast report shows net profit. If you're happy with the report and are ready to print, click the print preview button. To export your report, for example to email to a colleague, click the export button. Take a look at the video on reviewing and printing reports for more help with the reporting tools. Of course, if you're using the Estimate Professional QS version of BuildingWorks, BuildingWorks has also automatically produced elemental and works section bills of quantities without you having to type a thing. Navigate to the bill of quantities on the Project Explorer to take a look at the bills of quantities. Finally, let's take a look at the quotes. Click quotes on the Project Explorer. As with the reports, you need to ensure your estimate is complete and your bill program is set up before you produce a quote. Out of the box, you'll find a range of quote templates with varying levels of detail. Double click on a quote template to open it. Let's take a look at the customer quote with material quantities and cost by build phase template. The client and site address details from the project details screen appear automatically on the cover page, so you need to ensure you've entered them correctly. You can import your company logo to appear here. The quote includes a default cover letter. Of course you can edit this to reflect your company's style. Scrolling down the screen, you'll see that the quote is broken down into build phases. In this quote template, you can see line by line quantities and costs for materials and subtotals for labour and plant. At the end of your quote, you'll find a summary, followed by acceptance forms and finally space to include your terms and conditions. You have full control over the level of detail included in the quote. Click the edit button to edit the quote. You can customise different aspects of the quote, including the text in the letter and the terms and conditions. You can also edit the text for each build phase. You can decide whether to include branded or unbranded material names and whether to show material, labour and plant subtotals. It's completely up to you. Of course, you can simply select an alternative quote template. If you want to show much less detail, Select one of the abbreviated options, such as the abbreviated customer quote by build phase. Once you're happy with the quote, simply print it or export it and email it to your client. It's as easy as that. Over to you. Draft your design using the architectural design tools in the drawing module and create an instant estimate. Then take some time to explore the tools you need to manage your build, from the build program to reports and bills of quantities to customer quotes.